I'm preaching today about how uh, we are entrusted with the message of the gospel, that we are entrusted with the message of the gospel. And um, that is the gospel, right? There's so many ways to declare it. And um, we declare it with music sometimes so much better than we declare it with words. Thank you, Abby, and thank you to all of our musicians. Um, I also wanted to say that we declare the gospel with arts, right? And Aaron Chetwind made this beautiful piece um, for the women's retreat that we went on last week, and I asked her if she would display it here too. Isn't it amazing? She made that. I mean, that is what it means to be entrusted with a message and to give the message in ways that are too deep for words, right? Please won't you pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together find their way into the heart of God this morning. Amen. Among the most accomplished and fabled tribes in Africa, no tribe was considered to have warriors more fearsome or more intelligent than the mighty Maasai. It is perhaps surprising then to learn the traditional greeting that passed between Maasai warriors. Kasarian Ngera, one would always say to another, it means, and how are the children? It is still the traditional greeting among the Maasai acknowledging the high value that the Maasai always place on their children's well-being. Even warriors with no children of their own would always give the traditional answer, all the children are well. Meaning, of course, that peace and safety prevail, that the priorities of protecting the young, the powerless, are in place. The Maasai, that Maasai society has not forgotten its reason for being, its proper functions and responsibilities. All the children are well means that life is good. It means that the daily struggles for existence do not preclude proper caring for their young. Here in the United States, it's a hard time to be alive, to proclaim that all the children are well. Gun violence remains the number one cause of death for children ages 1 to 19 at a rate of almost five in every 100,000. Black children are six times more likely to die from gun violence than their peers. So when we ask, and how are the children, the priorities of protecting them are not in place. And today, here in New England, we mourn the loss of our literal neighbors, 18 innocent people killed in a mass shooting in Lewiston, Maine, so close to us, the place where we vacation, the place where our friends live, the place where we drive just to do some leaf peeping on a autumn day. And so today we pray for them and the 20 injured and for the soul of the shooter who died by his own hand after a long manhunt to find him. And we mourn the proliferation of these senseless acts of mass murder. And today, in addition, we cry with our students at Worcester State University, whose homecoming was canceled just this weekend because of a double shooting on their campus. My children have all seen videos of it that have been circulating on Snapchat. Every single New Englander is inextricably connected to Maine and to Worcester, and the 565th mass shooting in 2023 and the deadliest right next door has no doubt harmed us. So let's just say it, mass shootings are terrorism and they must end. Thoughts and prayers are not enough. Our dead civilians deserve our love and our outrage. 
and how are the children? They are doing drills with live simulations of fatal shootings in their classrooms every year. James Baldwin said, the children are always ours all over the globe, and I am beginning to suspect that whoever is incapable of recognizing this may be incapable of morality. And then, of course, there's this war in the Middle East that somehow feels closer to home than most. Maybe because we have so many Jewish and Muslim friends who are deeply affected. I have voraciously read every single story, history, video, photo, news article, and take I can on the Israel-Palestine war. Have you been doing this too? No. Yeah. Just like what, wasn't it Isaac, my son, who said yes <laughs> to stay in the moment to take care of self? That is a valid way to handle it, but I have not um, handled it that way. I feel like I can't look away, that it is my privilege to be able to. To quote my friend Rabbi Eve Eichenholz, who shared this uh, pulpit with me at the interfaith service that we held here two weeks ago, it's just a lot to hold. Then I look at my own healthy children getting ready to apply for college and going off to softball and soccer practice, and I have what feels like survivor guilt. It is only luck that they were born in this country at this particular time in history and into this family, and they could be getting sick drinking salt water to stay alive and clinging to their parents, while bombs pummel their friends' homes in Palestine. But that is not true of my children. Instead, they're worried about their scores on video games and what grade they got on their history test and hitting a home run in softball. 1,400 Israelis, 447 of them children, were killed by Hamas terrorists in Israel on October 7th. And in retaliation, 7,000 Palestinians in Gaza, 3,000 of them children, have been killed since October 7th. Meanwhile, I have been absolutely appalled at the ways in which my friends on the left, clueless as I am about the complexity of the geopolitical politics in the Middle East until now, have been dehumanizing Israeli victims of terrorism and, and American Jews and heralding Hamas as freedom fighters. I have been equally appalled by the Americans who have been ignoring the plight of the Palestinians as they are trapped in an open-air jail and murdered by the thousands by American-funded Israeli bombs. And Israelis are not their government and Palestinians are not Hamas. And I am beginning to think that our human propensity to think that our, oh, sorry, to group together and blithely dehumanize our opponents is perhaps our biggest moral failing. And how are the children? They are looking to us. My 10-year-old son Isaac asked me two weeks ago, Mom, which side are we on? And I said, Isaac, we don't have teams. We are on the side of the suffering, the side of humanity. Taking a side is damaging to the soul. God doesn't take sides. And how are the children? They also need us to speak with moral clarity, especially us in the church, in the synagogue, in the mosque. It is an internationally accepted norm that the rape, kidnapping, torture, and brutal murder of innocents are atrocities that are never justifiable. Hamas is a terrorist group whose mission is to kill all Jews. There is no gray area here. Every American Jew is directly connected to Israel. There is no six degrees of separation. And every American Jew weeps for their loved ones today, weeps for Israel. The Jewish people deserve our love and our outrage. And 
There is also no justification for a government cutting off food, water, and electricity and the annihilation of a people. Every Palestinian is connected to Gaza and weeps for their loved ones today. The Palestinian people deserve their freedom and our outrage, not our bombs. War doesn't determine who is right, only who is left. And here's where we can help, my friends, because there are very few ways that we can help. An ocean and a world away, there are very few ways that we can help. But both anti-Semitism and Islamophobia are on the rise in the United States since the war began. Anti-Semitism has increased almost 400% since October 7th. A young Palestinian child was murdered by his landlord in Illinois in a hate crime a couple of weeks ago. And as Christians, we know that Jesus would be standing with our Jewish and Muslim brothers and sisters against hate. He would cross the road to help. He would break bread with them. And we, we can use our outsized Christian voices to say, not in our name and protect our Jewish and Muslim neighbors with our words and even our bodies. As Christians, our work is to take the side of the least of these. We don't take the side of nation states or races or creeds or even a particular religion. We take the side of those who are mourning. We take the side of those who have lost lives. We take the side of the innocent. We take the side of the hated. We take the side of the sick and suffering. We take the side of the oppressed. We take the side of the imprisoned. We take the side of the weary and the war-torn. We take the side of the frantic families whose loved ones remain in captivity. We take the side of the brokenhearted. We take the side of the terrorized. We take the side of the dead. We take the side of the children. We take the side of the parents who've lost their children. And we look to our ancient texts for solace and for hope. And so today we heard Rabbi Jesus quote the Torah when he says that the greatest commandment is to love our Lord God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. And says that the second is like it. You shall love your neighbors as you love yourselves. And St. Paul in his letter to the people of Thessalonia says that we are entrusted with this message, this message of the gospel that love is love is love. Like a nurse tenderly caring for her children, we are to spread that good news. We are to stand among the rubble on the graves of the dead in this warring world and proclaim the audacious, cl the audacious claim that love wins. In the New Testament, the word used for love is agape. And agape love does not refer to a passive emotion. Instead, it is an active verb. It refers to what can be known as loving kindness, marked by patience, marked by generosity. This kind of love is a choice. It's not a feeling. Because if we think of love as an emotion, it seems impossible to love an invisible, remote, mysterious God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. And loving our neighbor is also difficult. If we think of love as an emotion, it seems impossible to look in the face of the enemy and feel love, right? But agape love is not a passive feeling. It is an active verb. It is loving kindness, merciful action that is generous and extravagant. Loving your neighbor is to love as you love yourself is to treat the stranger and your enemies as well as we treat our loved ones. To those we despise, to those we are at war with, to those who seek to harm us, we can choose to act according to the law of love, merciful and gracious. Is it hard? 
Yes. Is it what we are called to do as Christians? Is it? Yes. And that is how we love God, by being generous to God's people. Dorothy Day said that we really only love God as much as we love the person we love the least. We really only love God as much as we love the person we love the least. That's why Jesus says that the second commandment is like the first. When we love God's people, we love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. And we will never look into the eyes of someone who God doesn't love. Everyone is God's someone. You may feel that actively loving one's enemies in the face of terror and war is naive or dangerous, and truthfully, I do too. That's why I'm not Jesus. Our scriptures remind us that refusing to harden your heart, though, is a radical act. Jesus didn't turn the other cheek because he was some kind of wimp. He turned the other cheek to stick it to the man to say, I won't let your hate become my hate. My strength comes from the Lord, not from a weapon of war. There is a reason why the two most oft-repeated phrases in Scripture are remember and do not be afraid. Jesus knew that being afraid is the most dangerous emotion of all. Because it is fear that causes hate. It is fear that causes war. It is fear that causes people to stockpile weapons and close borders and build walls. Hate is for cowards. Fear kills. Love is brave. Remember. Mikhail Halev, who's the mother of Laor Abramov, 20, who was murdered by Hamas, said this, I am begging the world, stop all the wars, stop killing babies, stop killing people. War is not the answer. War is not how you fix things. This country, Israel, is going through horror, and I know the mothers in Gaza are going through horror. In my name, I want no vengeance. And Leroy Walker Sr., whose son was killed while trying to stop the Lewiston, Maine mass shooter, said on Friday to the media in, in this video, he, he said, I just can't hate him. You can't run around this world hating people. If you do, these kinds of things will happen more and more. They may be only individual things that happen, but if you hate and the hate drives you crazy, you're going to hurt people. And I've had my ups and downs in my life, and I don't want to hurt me. I don't want anyone to hurt me, and I don't want to hurt anybody. And I'm sure this man, whatever happened to his mind, I'm sure he wasn't born to be a killer, and I'm sure he had a father and a mother that would have never believed this would have happened to him. So all I can say is I'm sorry that it's happened to all of us. And I'm sorry about what may happen to him. And God will prevail. Hate will never bring my son back. Isn't that amazing? God will prevail. This poem by, is by Ann Weems and it is called, I No Longer Pray for Peace. On the edge of war, one foot already in, I no longer pray for peace, I pray for miracles. I pray that stone hearts will turn to tender heartedness and evil intentions will turn to mercifulness. And all the soldiers already deployed will be snatched out of harm's way and the whole world will be astounded to its knees. I pray that all the God talk will take bones and stand up and shed its cloak of faithlessness and walk again in its powerful truth I pray that the whole world might sit down together and share its bread and wine. Some say there is no hope, 
But then I've always applauded the holy fools who never seem to give up on the scandalousness of our faith, that we are loved by God, that we can truly love one another. I no longer pray for peace. I pray for miracles. And how are the children? They can be taught to never give up hope. They can watch us take bones and stand up and shed its cloak of faithlessness and walk again in the powerful truth that love is love is love. They can be taught to pray for miracles, to sit down together and share with the whole world. And beloved, you are trusted with the message of the gospel. Do not be afraid. Remember. As propaganda tries to make you forget that certain other sets of people are inhuman, resist the inclination to choose a side. Love instead. Nobody's children should be killed. Nobody's. Never give up on the scandalousness of our faith, which is the miracle that since we are loved by God, we can truly love one another. Amen.